Let's get started with iOS. Our new release is iOS 14. We've spent time rethinking some of the most iconic elements of the experience on iPhone. Let's dig in, starting with the home screen. Today's home screen works great, but as we get more and more apps, we can end up with this, lots and lots of pages. And we tend to forget what's beyond the first couple. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. It's a new space at the end of your home screen pages that automatically organizes all your apps in one simple and easy to navigate view. I've lost track of where a lot of things are, and that's where the app library comes in. You can see that all of my apps are automatically organized here. In fact, now with the app library, I actually don't need all those pages for all my apps. So we created an easy way to hide app pages. I just go into jiggle mode, tap the dots at the bottom and check this out. I get a zoomed out view of all my app pages. I can simply tap to hide the pages I no longer need, just like that. And now with those pages hidden, app library is always just a swipe or two away. So here in app library, getting to the app I'm looking for is really easy. Up at the top, I have the search field and I get all my apps organized from A to Z. Now over here on the upper left, I have suggestions. It uses on-device intelligence to show me the apps that I'm likely to need next. And on the right is recently added, giving me access to the apps that I've recently downloaded from the App Store. And below are intelligently curated categories. So I can tap into a category like Apple Arcade and see all of my apps in that category. Well, now let's go back. You may notice that in each of these categories, the apps I use most are right here at the top level. So I can launch one of these directly with just a tap. Next, let's turn to widgets. To start, they're more beautiful and data rich, and we're introducing different sizes, so you can choose one that best fits your needs. So let's swipe over to Today View, and you can see they now come in a variety of sizes, so you can pick just the right level of information for each one. Now, we like these new widgets so much, we wanted to make them even more accessible. So check this out. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget and I can drag it out of today view and onto my home screen. And watch as I move it around, the apps just dance out of the way to make space for my new widget. Well, let's add a second one. I'm just gonna tap the plus here in the upper left and grab onto podcasts. I can drop it just like that. Now I'm gonna swipe over to page two here and bring back up the widget gallery. The gallery is a great place to explore widgets. Now, when I tap on one, I can actually page through all of the different sizes available, just like this. But you know, right now what I wanna do is grab this widget up top. It's a really special one. It's called the Smart Stack. I'm just gonna tap it and drop it here. With the Smart Stack, I can easily swipe through widgets to pick just the one I want for the moment. Next, we're also bringing picture in picture to iPhone. So you can access apps on your iPhone while watching video or talking on a FaceTime call. Let me show you. So here on my home screen, the smart stack is showing me the TV widget. So I can just tap to start playing a show. Now check this out. When I swipe to go home, the video automatically goes into picture in picture right over the home screen. And when I launch another app, like Notes, I can keep watching. Now I can drag the picture to another part of the screen. If I wanna make it bigger, I can even pinch to zoom. And as I move between applications, it stays with me. And what's cool is I can also swipe it to the side and the audio keeps playing when it's off screen. Now here on the home screen, I can bring it back out if I want. And I have controls to get back to full screen playback or I can just tap the X to close it. Another iconic experience that's getting a major update is Siri. For example, if you say open Safari, Siri pops up at the bottom of the screen and instantly launches the app. Or if you ask for information, like the weather, results appear at the top of the screen, just like a notification. Now, this is especially great when there's information you want to reference on screen. For example, you could ask Siri to add to your grocery list. Siri is getting smarter and even more helpful every day. This year, you can now ask Siri to send an audio message, and Siri will start recording. Another popular way to send messages with your voice is using dictation. Keyboard dictation uses the same speech recognition as Siri. 
And leveraging the power of the neural engine, we are now able to run dictation on device. This provides great accuracy and privacy. We're introducing a new app called Translate. It is designed to be the best and easiest to use app for conversations, and it can work completely offline, keeping your conversations private. Using advanced on-device machine learning and the powerful neural engine, you can translate your text and voice between any combination of these 11 languages. Next up, messages. First, let's get started with conversations. From the beginning, Messages was designed to make it really easy to get to your newest messages. But with so many active conversations, sometimes it can be tough to get to the ones that are most important to you. So we are introducing a new way to let you stay connected to your most important conversations by letting you pin them at the top of your list so you can always get to them. And you can see messages as they come in with a beautiful animation on the pin. In iOS 14, we're adding even more ways to create your look with over 20 new hair and headwear styles to let you reflect your hobby, profession, and personality. We've also added something that's even more relevant today, face coverings. And we're adding more age options too. We're adding inline replies that let you reply directly to a specific message. You can view replies in the full conversation or you can view them as their own thread so you can focus in on the specific topic. To make it even more clear who a message was meant for, we're introducing mentions. With mentions, you can just type someone's name to direct a message to them. And now you have the ability to only be notified when you're mentioned in the group conversation. And check out the top of this conversation. We have an all new design for how groups appear. It lets you see all the members of your group where the most recently active people are shown largest. And for the first time ever, you can create a unique visual identity for your group by setting a group photo or customizing your group's look with an emoji. Inside the conversation, you see group members' photos around the image. Of course, it looks great as a pin. You know who's most recently commented in the group because their photo will appear around the outside of the pin. Next, let's take a look at features that help us while we're out and about. First, let's talk about finding great places. In iOS 14, the Maps team will be working with some of the world's most trusted brands to offer amazing guides. Guides for great places to eat, shop, meet friends, or explore in cities around the world. With iOS 14, we're introducing great new features to help our users reduce their carbon footprint. And our first one is also our most requested, it's cycling. We're adding a dedicated cycling option to maps, which allows users to ride their bike along bike lanes, paths, and roads. Maps takes elevation into account to let you know if you're in for a challenging uphill workout or a leisurely flat ride. For environmentally conscious drivers, we're also introducing EV routing. With iOS 14, Maps will track your current charge and factor in things like elevation and weather to automatically add charging stops along your route. And Maps will know which type of charger works for your car, making sure to only route you to compatible stations. Cities around the world are also working to improve air quality and reduce traffic. So we're adding congestion and green zones to maps to easily see where they are along with alternate routing options. Let's turn to the App Store. An app clip is a small part of an app. It's light and fast and easy to discover. So you can quickly get what you need right when you need it. They start with this card, which quickly pops up. And with just a tap, you can launch the app clip. You don't need to enter credit card numbers because app clips can use Apple Pay for payments. And you don't have to manually log into an account because it can take advantage of sign in with Apple. App clips won't clutter your home screen and will only stay along as long as you need them. But you can easily launch recently used app clips from the new app library. It's always easy to download the full app. And this makes app clips an easy way to discover more of what the app store has to offer. App clips can be easily discovered and launched from the web. You can launch app clips from messages when friends share them with you. When you want to order takeout from a restaurant and maps, you can launch an app clip right from a place card. You'll be able to tap on NFC tags out in the world on things like parking meters, or you can scan QR codes to launch app clips that work with products you purchase. The best way to discover app clips will be with a new Apple-designed app clip code. Next, let's talk about AirPods. We have some amazing updates coming to AirPods, starting with automatic switching. AirPods will now seamlessly move between your devices without you having to manually switch them. 
Let's say you just finished listening to a podcast and you pick up your iPad to watch a show. AirPods will magically switch over. And later, you start a video conference on your Mac. AirPods will automatically switch again. And if a phone call comes in, the audio in your AirPods will route right back to your phone. We also have an exciting new feature coming to AirPods Pro, spatial audio. Turns out it's a lot harder to do when you only have a single earbud in each ear. So our team created advanced spatial audio algorithms for AirPods Pro that replicate the movie theater experience. By applying directional audio filters and subtly adjusting the frequencies each ear receives, we can place sounds virtually anywhere in space, creating an immersive surround sound experience. So we use the accelerometer and gyroscopes in AirPods Pro to track the motion of your head, remapping the sound field so it stays anchored to your device, even as your head moves. And it's not only your head that can move, but you might move your iPad or iPhone as well. That's why we constantly compare the motion data from your head and your screen to understand how they're moving in relation to each other. Spatial audio for AirPods Pro will work with content encoded in 5.1, 7.1, and even Dolby Atmos. And that's iOS 14. It's a huge release that transforms the core experience of iPhone with redesigned widgets right on the home screen and a new way to organize your apps with the app library. It adds incredible updates to some of the most popular apps with powerful improvements to messages and maps and introduces a whole new way to tap into apps with app clips.